we're back again. Just the two of us. There's no Ico today. Welcome to the Nightlife Podcast. Here is uh, Julio Zambrano, your nightlife entrepreneur, and our friend Sorimar Castillo. How Hello. are you? Hi, guys. Welcome, How welcome are you, to the show. Julio? Good, good, good. Finally, we got you on the show. And we are going to talk a little bit about your experience in the industry. And we are going to talk a little bit about the street team. And maybe we'll talk a little bit about the hosting part because I know you did a little bit of that too. Um, so, yeah, so Sodi came into the US how long ago? About two years ago. Two okay. years and a half. All right, two and a half years ago, which is, you know, pretty soon. You, you speak English very well. Yeah. Did, you, did you learn it here or in Venezuela? Well, I took an English course for three years in Venezuela, but it didn't work. So I basically learned it here. Oh, that's yeah. very good. Very good. You know how many people I've asked on this show that have lived here for the past 20, 30 years and, and don't, don't want to come English. to the show because they say they don't speak English or they don't want to talk in the camp. Especially when you're in Miami. Yeah. Yes, true. That is true. All right. So um, tell us a little bit about yourself. What do you do now? Okay. Now I'm working at a bank. And okay. I also work with an investments firm as a life insurance agent and as a financial advisor as well. Okay, so complete opposite of what you were doing with us. With Completely the night opposite, yeah. All right, awesome, awesome, <laughs> awesome. Question, did what you learned from the nightlife help you in any way to what you do today, for what you do today? Did, did it help in any way? Did, did, was there anything that helped you, you know, maybe social skill wise, maybe, you know, just talking to people, the, whole, the English part of it, and anything. Well, I think that the main reason of what I'm here today is because I started doing the la the nightlife with you guys. Because when I came here, I didn't know anyone. Right. And when I work in the nightlife industry, it helped me to meet a lot of people and also to uh, get related to different types types of uh, not only people but also industries because right. they introduced me to their industries right. to their companies so I started learning a lot and I did a lot of networking okay and I think that it helped me a lot to right. grow in this industry in this new one that I'm right, right. now working with. all right so so the main subject I want to I want to you know talk about with you is is the part that you did with us which is the street team It's something we have not talked about on the show and I've seen um, so many different places you know applied in different ways and so many different people that work the streets that sounded weird working the streets and it's not like I always kind of thing yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, working the street. so yeah actually tell us a little bit about what you were doing with us how was your what was your work with us mainly Okay, well, I remember that uh, you guys were in Blue Martini on Thursdays, mm -hmm. and a friend and I, we started we, with them, uh, working from, I think, 8.30 to 11, and we were in the street. Cheers uh, to Oriana, by the way. Cheers to Ori. <laughs> She'll be happy. Yeah. <laughs> well, we were downstairs Blue Martini right. with uh, cards. It was like a business card, but with a complimentary drink and free entrance. Okay. If they show the car in the entrance in a specific hours. Right. So from 8 to 11, mm -hmm. if they got in with the car, they pass for free and they got a free drink as well. Right. So basically, we have to talk to people right. and try to not convince them, but to let them know about the... The opportunity promo. and the promo um, that Blue Martini was upstairs and that right. on Thursdays it was really really good so right. that's what we all right so so yeah so that's basically one of the the easiest and best ways um, to do street promotion which is actually you know because you're giving these people that are walking by maybe some of them might be thinking of going there already but you're still pushing them a little further in, into knowing okay you're not gonna get charged at the door if you use this Pause. Oh, I'm giving you a free drink. So there's a few things that are helping. But when you started working with us, the numbers were improved um, as to the amount of people that were coming into the club with the cards themselves, which we call them VIP cards, actually, uh, <laughs> instead of business cards, a VIP card. So what do you think that you guys were doing that was different from anybody who was doing that before? 
Oh. Was we, it the fact that you guys are we, women? We weren't Girls? the only ones that were doing it already with you, the street team. At that moment, yes. Um, what I'm saying is, before you but guys before did it, before you guys us? did it, wh whoever was doing it before, if we had different people doing it before, the numbers when you guys came in improved. Oh, okay. So we're better More numbers. Than before. Yeah, right. So my, what I'm wondering is, what do you think you guys were doing so that this became? Because we're but, women. <laughs> so, so I mean, I, 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 I guess that 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 definitely has a lot to do with it. Um, no, now, I think but that's with guys. But what if you know you got girls in too? Yeah, but I think that not only because we were girls, but also because of the hours. Okay. When we started working from eight to eleven, it's a great, great hour because at that time a lot of people walk, a right. lot of people. So on a Thursday night around twelve, eleven thirty, they already at home. And when we got there every Thursday, there were a lot of people work, uh, walking. Right. So I think that was a very good thing about working with you on Thursdays. The right. time, it was early. Uh, also, yeah, it's true, we are women. And right. it's a plus, it helps a lot. We're young and we were very, very friendly with all of them. I right. think that's the main key. Okay, I think the same way that we had to explain, you know, working the streets, I think we have to explain oh, friendly. Oh, friendly? Okay, I want <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, people no, might, I mean, might, pay, might take it the wrong way. By um, friendly, know. I mean that we talked to every single person we right. saw on the street. We yeah. didn't... We, we weren't ashamed of talking to anyone because, oh, they're Americans or, right. oh, because... And by the way, this was no. this was two years ago, so it was, it was actually when, when you were starting to learn the language. The you language, know, the English and, yeah. And, and I didn't know anything but about didn't the language. But it didn't matter. But it worked because it helped me improve my language because right. I needed to communicate with them. Right. Because on that street, all of them only sp spoke, spoke English. English. So, right. yeah, it was... It was a challenge, but did it, did it help it. to have somebody else working with you, or was it something you felt comfortable doing by yourself? No, it helped a lot working with my friend because she was, for example, on the corner and I was on the other corner. This is sounding and very weird. Working the streets, being in the corner, and being friendly—it's <laughs> not what you guys are thinking in any way, shape, or form. And I, you know, I don't approve of it. But um, no, but to that point. Uh huh. Uh, a lot of people debate all, a, a lot when they're they're hiring a, a street team. They're like, okay, so this girl or this guy charges this much, um, and this other person charges this, you know, the same amount. I don't think I need two people to be on the same spot doing the same job, so I rather just hire one. Every time that we've done that, unless it's a very, very, very good um, person doing it, it's the numbers go down a lot. Not only are there two people, which is better, mm -hmm. and it's worth the expense, yeah, but at the same time, the people, it's like going out. Let's say that you're going out with your, with your friends, and you go to, out to a club. When you come with your friends, you feel like, okay, here we are. You feel like somebody's you know, backing you up. Like you feel comfortable talking feel to like anybody. <laughs> yes, exactly. At least guys, when guys go out, in a group of guys, you know, uh, a wolf pack, <laughs> as they call it, it's like they feel comfortable talking to anybody and all that kind of stuff. If a guy goes out by himself, most of the guys are shy or quiet. And they wouldn't talk to anyone. They don't talk yeah. to anybody. Like, same thing happens when when you guys work in teams. It's like easier to talk to people. You know, because you feel more motivated because the other person is doing it doing as it well. Too, right. So you don't feel ashamed Yeah, it's like, okay, they're not, if they make fun of me, they gotta make fun of her too, that, that kind of thing. And, and to the point of working one person alone, I think when it's one person alone, you go with the guy in that case because and 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 shout out to mauricio who did it before you guys too who did good numbers also um with that uh when it's when it's only one person i think it's a guy better just you know to be careful it's one girl on her own on the street by herself, it, by herself. like you said number yeah. one she's gonna be shy talking to the people and i've seen it a lot of my competition has one one girl out there and a lot of the time i see that like that like they hide you know, they don't want to be seen. They're kind of handing a flyer to the people that walk by. That, to me, that doesn't work. You got to have a conversation. If you don't talk to the people, it's not going to work. Yeah. And most of the time, when you guys are doing these jobs, you guys make more money if there's more people coming to the club. That's why you get those visits. 
yeah, you know, I, VIP I remember cards. that our first month, oh, uh, we made like a record. We call it a record because uh, there was a night that we, uh, I think we we got ninety one cards. Right. Ninety one cards. Yeah. Yeah. So ninety one, ninety one people. I mean, the for month, for those so of you. Who, yeah. who know what you know what that means bringing 91 people to to a club is not an easy task uh, sub promoters don't do those kinds of numbers usually so street team gets a little more advantage because they're getting the people off the off the streets of course if you're in a street you know in a city like Vegas or if you're in a city like New York you're gonna get huge numbers but in Miami getting 91 people to a club that's not on South Beach is very hard you know in Brickell, in the Brickell area it's very 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 yeah, and also uh I'm mentioning it because it's very impressive right. since we didn't speak English at all. Right. Since it was our first month and right. we didn't know how to do it. But we felt very confident talking and smiling to any single person that we saw. So right. that was the key. Right. So when, when somebody out there, uh, be it a promoter or a club manager, is going to hire a street team, things to consider probably should be thinking of having girls out there um, or you you can't discriminate but but for sure consider if you got girls how important are looks in that department because normally in the business we say a lot that the hostess which you've done that job too mm -hmm. is our our face is our front so when somebody arrives to a club you want to make sure that that hostess looks good because you got to have somebody who dresses nice who's always dressed up as you know can smile to, yeah, to the people. The first, uh, it's face the first you impression. See, it's at the, the person venue. that is greeting you. And so I remember that um, a GM at Brew Martini told us one time when you guys hire the street team, remember that they are our first impression now. So that is very true. Um, so yeah, I guess considering that woman is uh, for sure a, a positive Yo. to hire. <laughs> what, what else do you think is a good tip to give anybody who's hiring a street team? Well, I strongly suggest that you should uh, hire at least two girls most of the time because as uh, Julio said, it's not worth it if, if you only hire one person. First of all, because she won't do the job. Right. And she won't get the results because probably she will feel bad or ashamed or right. she will feel sometimes in danger because she's by herself. Right. And that's not good. If you want to get results with a street team, you need to hire at least two. And they they definitely will do it. Right. Is there a certain way that people should be dressing up when they're going to do this kind of job? They have to be dressed up, yeah. With heels, I think that with heels is the key. That should be the, un the uniform, heels, and a uh, uh, So just go out there in heels. Wear some heels. <laughs> and that brings people. <laughs> yeah, because in heels you look very, very. Mm, yeah, more elegant. Or very you know. elegant. Yeah, very beautiful as a woman, and everyone will look at you. And the girl's gonna be feeling also more, more comfortable, even though you're more gonna be doing a lot of walking. So make sure it's heels that you feel comfortable walking in. How many hours were you guys doing a street team usually? Uh, we started from eight to eleven, and then okay. it was from eight to ten thirty. Right. So, so that's very, you know, it, it depends on the area you're in, you know, where, wherever you're from. Like I said, in, in Vegas, street is crazy. You know, although most of the street promotion you get in Vegas is for the actual prostitution. <laughs> over oh, really? there, but yeah, where there's crazy, you know, they're giving pamphlets for, for, for everything. But, but they're on the streets everywhere. Every club's giving wristbands. That's another thing. When now that you, you know, when you've been doing this, we've been doing a lot of that, of the VIPs. Mm -hmm. But back, in the day, you know, a few decades ago, it used to be done with wristbands all the time. Okay. And there was a guy, Matt, um, who's gonna be on the show at some point, uh, Gerald from France. Gerald was doing a street team, and it's one of the good stories about street. It, it all really depends on how far you wanna take it. Um, Gerald decided that instead of doing street himself, he was gonna start hiring other people to do it. For him. Right, and on South Beach, what uh, what is paid for for street promotion is a little higher than most places because there's a demand for it. There's so many people out there that everybody wants to grab them. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So they do the wristbands on South Beach, 
back then, but they would send 20, 30 people to do it, you know? So everybody was getting paid per wristband for whatever amount of people they were bringing, and Gerald would keep a little bit of that from everybody that was bringing wristbands. So he would start getting one club here, one club there, putting 30 guys here, 30 guys there. there. From that, he built so much that today he owns three different nightclubs. He even bought a nightclub in Las Vegas. I mean, it, it, it's a... It's a great story, I and mean, he'll be on the show at some point. And another thing that I would suggest to the people that you'd like to hire a street team is that they need to pay them based on the amount of flyers or the amount of fans that they uh, give, give up. and not based on the hours, because there's a lot of people that make the mistake of paying the people by hour, and right. they don't do anything, because they already know that they're going to get yeah. paid anyways so it's not worth it like yeah that. that is for some reason i mean I, I guess it applies to any any job but in in that's one of the cases where i've seen it a lot and is that if people know they're gonna get an amount of money specific and it doesn't and it doesn't matter what job they do so that's why almost everything that we do in promotion is based on productivity in the based end on and if, if by any chance you work every week and every week and every week and your numbers are you know like those 90 people then it's okay f for you to get offered, you know, a, a, at least a base, a salary, so that if any day it, things go bad or it's a slow day, it rains, whatever, at you still get you uh, something. Exactly. Your base salary. Right, exactly. Um, but for sure, you give them a base and make sure there's something they're looking forward to so that they know that they want to bring more people in there. And that way, you involve them also in thinking and giving you ideas of how they can improve, uh, you know, bringing more people to, to the club. As a matter of fact, I think when you guys started, we were not doing the free drink, and we added the free drink oh. because... Only the free entrance. Right, it was only free entrance at first, and we added the free drink when the rest of the club started giving the free you know, entrance, mm -hmm. and we were like, okay, so what do we do to make it a little more or more interesting? And, and we added the free entrance and the, the, that complimentary first drink, and it just, boom, right away. Of course, do this at hours that are off hours. You know, transition is what we call the 8 to 11 hours. Happy hour, that doesn't work much because you're giving very cheap drinks. That's and true. during the nightlife, you know, the night, night time after 11, that's where you make most of the money and you should have lots of flow. So definitely that, that should work too. All right, so um, you, what is it exactly that you're doing today so that you can tell them a little bit about you oh well I work at a bank and I also work as a financial advisor with an investments company I have uh, six months with my license and I'm gonna get my series six very soon which is the investments license and yeah basically I'm helping people better reach uh, I don't know how to say it. let's say it better um, multiply their money. Okay, multiply their money. Multiply their money. Sorry. Okay. And I suggest them to invest their money in other options. With besides rates, whatever they're doing. Okay. Besides to whatever they're investing the money on. Right. Got now. It. Yeah. Awesome. And I also. Did you meet that opportunity? Like, how did that come about after you're working in the nightlife? Oh well. It's kind of weird, but one day a person that I didn't know, mm -hmm. he wrote me an Instagram. I didn't reply, but he again texted me and he said, oh, my company is having a conference in Miami. I would like you to just look for me for a reservation in, at Kiki on the River. Okay. So I replied and I said, why don't you look it by yourself? Why you don't find out by yourself the reservation? And he explained me, oh, because I'm not from here, I'm from uh, Houston and I know that you're there. But anyways, I told him about the reservation because I had a friend that knows all the people there and I follow him on Instagram. So I saw that every time he was posting stories about the company and about how good he was doing with them. And one day he, he put a story that said that he was looking for people to hire and train in Miami. Right. So I wrote him 
and he recruited me. He transferred me to the team that is doing the business here in Miami, and I started working with them just because of Instagram. Oh. What I don't get is why would somebody ask you to do a reservation at a nightclub or restaurant? I didn't get it too, but thank God he asked because now I'm working thank God with for this social amazing media. company. All right, yeah. awesome, awesome, awesome. Well, I'm glad to see that, you know, that you're growing uh, for sure. You know, we, we are very glad to be part of that history because for sure we, we saw when you arrived how you wanted to strive. And, and that's also something important. Anyone that's getting into this, um, there is no position in, in any business that is too small or that is not too good for anybody. You know what I mean? Like, and everybody starts somewhere you know mm -hmm. i mean I, i've mopped floors at a pizza hut you know so i know for a fact that you got to start from the bottom and and grow for sure so so i'm very glad to see you growing i love the fact that you are speaking the language you know and <laughs> you're in front of a camera and a microphone so that's even you know two to see you, you so and best thing you know best wishes with that new business and i hope everybody learned a little bit from you know Sori and her experience and well. in the street <laughs> teams and the streets of Miami. So, all right, what are your hashtags? Um, your Instagram, I mean, hashtags, your um, handles, your handles in Instagram so people can follow you and, uh, and, and well, make reservations through, <laughs> through, you know. My Instagram is Castillo Sori with Y. S O R Y, like sorry, but one R. I have to say it like that because people don't understand. Right, right. It's like sorry, but with one R. Right, sorry, sorry, but not sorry. On Instagram. <laughs> okay, and you find me at the Nightlife Entrepreneur on Instagram. You find our podcast on the on nightlifepodcast.com. You can find all the episodes there, and we'll see you next week.